All right, let's jump into the roundup staple style post. Um, a roundup blog post, first of all, should not be confused with a list article or a listicle as we often like to call it. Um, a list article is where we're just gonna list out a bunch of different things. Um, we've done a lot of these where, you know, uh, products for internet marketers, right? And these are all products that aren't necessarily related to each other, but they're all good for internet marketers. Listicles are great for vacation destinations and product recommendations and all sorts of things. However, that's not what we're doing here. What we're doing here is we're directly comparing similar items. They have something in common. It might be items that are all in the same class, like they're all about the same price and they're all, um, you know, a similar type of product, just different brands. And we're going to make a recommendation maybe based on different users preferences or needs or we may look at similar products kind of across the price spectrum to see what benefits do you get as you go up in price um, this is what we're talking about with a product roundup blog post when it comes to writing this kind of blog post a lot of the research is going to be done for us already once we've already written the individual reviews in terms of writing and publishing these I would want to publish them all around the same time, but I would also want the individual reviews to be published before I do the roundup. But I also want to make sure I go back to each of those individual reviews. And like I talked about in the lesson where we talked about the reviews, I want each one of those, as soon as I publish the roundup, I want each of those to link to that blog post as well. Again, it's going to really bring a lot of people to that roundup blog post. It's going to give that post a lot of authority, a lot of juice, and it's probably gonna help it do pretty well on Google. When I say that a lot of the research is gonna be done, it's because we've already done the experimentation in the individual reviews. However, I would give you kind of a word of advice when it comes to doing that experimentation. I'd like you to think through all this before you start writing the individual review posts. I know I already had you do one, um, and that was a great learning exercise, and I think it's valuable to have. But going forward, what I'd like you to do is, you know, maybe take that one, find a few, other um, products that are in that same class, that same category, that you would maybe want to compare this one to. And I want you to consider writing those individual reviews, but think in from the beginning about how you would compare them. What are the criteria that you want to use for comparison? And now what experiments can you do to compare them, right? We talked about the vacuum cleaner. The dirt and mud and sand on the rugs is perfect for comparing them side by side. That's information that could help you in writing the individual review, but it's even more meaningful in a comparison because you can say, how did they do? Well, each one gets a score from one to five. This one picked up the most, it gets a five. This one picked up a little less, it gets a four. And you could even include the actual weights of how much were picked up, but in the end, it's comparing them side by side. The suction test I mentioned, very, very simple of having the paper hang there. Um, that suction test means almost nothing in an individual review. But in a comparison, you can see which one has the most suction. It means a lot. Weighing the vacuum, you know, you could just say subjectively in an individual review, it's pretty light. It's good for using on the stairs. Or it's really heavy. I would never use this on stairs. If you own this vacuum, make sure you own one for each floor in your house. You don't want to carry this thing around. However, in a comparison, it's really easy to say, this is really heavy, this is lighter, this is lighter, and give it a score that compares them side by side. And then based on all these criteria, you may end up with an overall winner when you give them all a score. We love the one to five or the one to 10 or whatever, and it's a little bit subjective, but you know sometimes where it's actual weights and stuff, you could, um, you could use the weight to actually give it a really objective score, but still putting it on a one to 10. And then in the end, there is a ranking. There is a ranking and a, often a pretty clear winner. However, you'll find that some of the criteria matter more to certain people than other criteria, and they make, may make a decision to buy the number two or number three ranking product. A great example of this, a little while back on the Channel Makers YouTube channel, we reviewed RGB lights. These little lights that you can make shine in any color, it's shining blue behind me on the wall, right? And we did a whole bunch of experimenting this was for a video, but the same principles apply. In the end, we weeded out like 70% of them. But in the end, we were able to narrow it down to a few. We had one main recommendation, but then we gave those few caveats and we were able to list out a couple of others that we do think are a good option for certain people in certain specific types of situations. 
and it makes for excellent content. So how are we using this? This blog post is going to be able to rank for a specific search query, for multiple specific search queries, I should say. When people say, you know, this RGB light versus this RGB light, and they list the two, they want to see a comparison. I've done this. I did this when I was looking at Fitbit or, you know, fitness trackers year ago, years ago. I wanted to know about the Fitbit versus the Garmin at the time and the things that the Fitbit had going for it, I liked. The things it had going against it, I didn't care about. So I was able to make a good decision because somebody bought both of them and tested them out and told me what was good about each one. Every single pairing of two products within your group of products is something that you could potentially rank for because you have all of the information together um, on, on your blog. So how do we structure this post? Now, one option would be to have each of the subheadings of the blog post be one of the different products. I actually don't like that very much. I would rather structure it so that each subheading is one of the different criteria that I used for testing. And then we're able to actually like describe the test that we did, um, talk about it, um, point out a few of the things that really stood out. Maybe some of the products were really outstanding or some of them were really bad and talk about that a little bit and then you know, actually list out how each one did. Put that information all right there. And then the next subheading is the next criterion. In the end, it'll be really great to have a table that lists the scoring and the ranking and the main recommendations. A lot of bloggers would put that at the bottom. I recommend putting it at the very top. Give the answer right away. Say at the very beginning, there's a little intro. I compared all of these side by side. I ran a whole bunch of different tests. Here's a table with a summary, the ranking, um, and here's my main recommendation. And again, like we did in the product review, you might have a key takeaway that's just, I think that most people that want an RGB light should buy this one. And you're gonna write it in that encyclopedic way to make it a really good answer target. The best RGB light on the market for most users is boom. Depending upon your, you know, if you want something with a little bit more color accuracy or you want something with a convenient app, you may want a different one. And then below that, you're gonna have the, um, a block that's like best RGB light for you know, overall, best RGB light for people that wanna use multiple at the same time, whatever it's going to be. And you're gonna put that information right at the top. People are gonna see the criteria that you used. They're gonna be interested in you know, how they compared on that criteria. And they're gonna to wanna to jump into and at least scroll down to the criteria that matter the most to them. So that's the structure of this blog post. Summary key takeaway goes at the top. You'll probably write it last, but then each of the criteria is a subheading and you're going to include all of the results of your experimentation. This article ends up being really easy to write. The time consuming portion is the experimentation. The cool thing is you get to use the experimentation to feed not only the roundup post, but each of the individual reviews and it's gonna make your content unique, totally original, super valuable. And with each of the products that you actually recommend that people buy, you're gonna include that affiliate link and it's going to allow you to earn a good income from this blog post. So it's time to go write, um, or at least plan out a concept for a roundup post so that, so that you can start implementing this on your website. It's a great way to start earning a pretty good income from the site in the early days even before you have a ton of traffic.